What's up guys, my name is Ivan Valdovinos and on this channel I provide tips, tricks, advice and strategies for your graduate school applications. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. In this video, I am going to share with you my PhD curriculum vitae or CV. That way you get a sense of what to write in your CV to make a strong application package for your graduate school applications. The first thing that you need to do when you start your CV and you start writing it is that you want to put your name at the top. So as you can tell here I put my name, Ivan Baldovinos. Originally this um, CV had um, other information at the bottom of my name but obviously because I don't want people to know my personal information here on YouTube, I decided to take that out. But what you should be including at the bottom of your name, under your name here, is you want to include your phone number and a professional email um, address. And so I would suggest that you use your undergraduate institution email, if not a professional Gmail. Don't try to be cute with these emails. You want them to be professional because a professional committee is going to be reading this resume or CV. You also want to make sure that you don't play around with fancy fonts because you want, to, you want this CV to be clear and easy to read. So as you can tell here, I use Times New Roman as my font and my name is actually a 24 size font. So I would say something like a 20 point font to a 24 size font for your name is a good size. And then everything else should either be 12 point font or 14 point font. So I would say the 12 point font should be most of your bullet points. And then the, the um, 14 point font should be the subheadings for each of your categories. And so the first category that we're going to talk about here is my education. So in here I will um, put down my master's degree information, my bachelor's degree information, and my study abroad experience. So let's go through each one of these sections. So the first one is um, the Harvard Graduate School of Education. So I attended in 20, or I got my degree in 2016. And then at the bottom I, I put down the degree that I was able to attain. I did the same thing with my, with my bachelor's degree program. As you can tell here, I attained two bachelor's degrees and I put both degrees there plus the concentrations. And then I also included a award that I had won at the institution, which, which, which was this junior writing portfolio. And I passed that with distinction, which meant that I was in the top 10% of the junior class for writing. Um, for writing. And so the reason why I included this award was because I knew that a PhD program is very heavy on the reading and the writing. They expect its students to produce high quality work in terms of writing and they expect their students to publish articles. And so I wanted to show the committee right off the bat that I was strong in writing. So I, I put this award at the beginning of my CV, that way they saw the strength in my myself and my application. So I suggest that you reflect on some of your awards that you have won if you have won any and then put down your most prominent award in this section. That way they're able to see who you are right away and not have to dig more deeper in the CV um, to identify these awards and these strengths. And then finally, the last thing that I included was my um, study abroad experience in Madrid, Spain, where I studied the culture and the language in 2014. And so I wanted to show the committee that I was not just tied to the United States, but I also, I also went globally to learn something different from my own culture. The next section that I included here is the research experience sections. Most CVs that I have seen um, usually go with a work experience section right after their education. But the reason why I chose to use the research experience section was because um, I knew that a PhD is a research degree. So I wanted to show the committee right away that I had some research experience, that I was going to be a valuable asset to their school, their program, and that I had the experience to be successful in their program. And so I included this next alongside my other couple of sections were publications as well as conferences that I presented. So let's check out these sections. So my research experience section here, I put down that I was a um, undergraduate research with the Ronald D. McNair post Baccalaureate Achievement Program. And I worked with this program for two years. In the bullet points, I described my experience. Um, I talked about my original research that I had constructed and, and conducted. And then I talked about my, some of the skills that I had gained so I was able to develop a data collection instrument and analyze quant quantitative data. And, the, and then I also presented this work at a research conference for education in Chicago, Illinois. 
Something that I would do though to improve this section is be more concrete and detailed with my bullets. So I could have mentioned who was my undergraduate research mentor. I could have mentioned that um, I had published this article because of this research. I could have mentioned um, a bunch of other things, that, a bunch of other skills that I had gained that would make this piece more outstanding and valuable to the committee. Right now it's kind of broad and boring in my opinion. But obviously I still got into programs so it wasn't a big deal but um, I would still try to improve it by being more detailed. My second experience for undergraduate research was at the at the Summer Research Institute program in Tucson, Arizona. So in this one, as you can tell, I did put my research mentor, who was Dr. Nolan Cabrera, and I also included that he was at the Department of Education Policy Studies and Practice in Higher Education. I talked about the topic for my research, and then that I, that I also went to this conference at Harvard University to present my to present this research, and so. As you can tell in this section, in the second um, undergraduate experience, I, I was more detailed in terms of how I presented my research, but I still could have done more. I could have talked about um, this research being a qualitative study versus a quantitative study. I could have talked about the research skills that I had gained, like coding and how to co and, and how I learned how to code qualitative research. And so I made a mistake here, but obviously it didn't make sense. It didn't make any uh, a big deal. It wasn't a big deal because I was still able to get into um, five PhD programs with this CV. The next section is the publications. So my publications weren't in big journals. As you can tell here, they were in, so one of my journals was the Summer Research Institute Journal, which is at the University of Arizona, which is like a uh, University of Arizona Summer journal so i put i put that in here and then my other one was the washington state university mcnair journal which is only tied to the mcnair program but the reason why i included this was because i wanted the committee to know that i was thinking about publishing my my journal articles that i learned about the process of editing a journal article to be able to you know make it into a journal and so i wanted to show them that i had these skills and that i was just thinking about them even though they weren't submitted to big journals that i still knew the process that i was still more motivated to um, submit these to larger journals in the future and then when I develop and conduct my own research at the PhD level I am committed to you know sharing my work at the national level. The next section that I included was the conference presentation slash attended um, section here. So in this section I just really just jotted down all of the conferences that I went to to present my work whether it was my undergraduate research work or it was some other uh, projects that I had worked on. For example like I put this project um, where I presented an oral presentation at the global case competition which is not related to my research that I talked about earlier but I just wanted to show the committee that I had this experience of presenting in a um, and communicating my research experience to a large audience. And so I wanted to showcase that I was able to communicate via a oral presentation as well as a poster presentation because when you're a PhD student, you're gonna be going to conferences for your field and you're gonna be you know, um, sharing your work with leading researchers, senior scholars, and just pe people in general. So I wanted to show the committee that I had this, this experience and that I was gonna be able to, um, you know, produce high quality work and present it when I was a PhD student. Finally, the next, the bit, the other section was my professional experience. So in here, I spoke about all of my work experiences, my internships, um, my volunteer experiences, and I clustered those under professional experience. So the first thing that I put in here was my work as a retention specialist for a program and I put down as you can tell very detailed of what I did so I put in numbers like I worked with 60 students on these plans I assisted with financial aid scholarship and college at slash university transfer applications I did some record keeping and data entry and so if you read through my CV here you're gonna see how detailed I was I put a lot of number a lot of data so I want to make sure that you understand that it's important to put very detailed responses in these bullets of your experiences. Don't leave it broad. When you put input data, you're showing the committee that um, you know that you're being detailed and that you're not just you know taking a break from the other sections of the application. And so I encourage you to be detailed in these sections here and 
jot down your you know your accomplishments you know if you're um if you worked with over 400 people for a conference put that in here if you attended a conference to learn more skills for your job put that in this section you want to produce results and you want to show what those results um you know created so you want to put those in these bullets yeah, so if you keep, uh, so as you can tell, like my this section was pretty long for me because I had a lot of experience, and I put everything starting from my undergraduate experience. So when I started school, at my undergraduate school until I uh, until now, so that was in the last ten years is what I put in here. Let's see, and then the final section that I put is a section that I titled projects. And the reason why I titled this projects was because I worked on these for a semester at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. So it wasn't a lar large extended time. And so I only, I put those in here because of that reason. And so I was able to work um, with a couple of nonprofit organizations at the Harvard Graduate School of Education in the greater Boston area. And so I put down here what I, what I had done so a lot of these were program evaluation type of um work and so i put those in here i also was a content creator for this program called esl mobile and so i put all these information here that way the committee knew that i was working on smaller projects and not just you know using my time at a larger scale one key point that I want you to remember is that you should not be using fancy fonts. Stick to a Times New Roman, 12 font um, for most of your bullets, 14 font for your subheadings, and then a 20 to 24 size font for your name. You also want to make sure that it's clean, easy to read, so if you keep continuing to watch this video here, you can definitely use my template. I, I don't mind you using my template, how I, I actually created this on my own, and so you can definitely use that if you want. Um, as as, you know to organize your resume or CV um, the next thing that I want to say is in your bullet points you want to be very detailed in terms of what you um, put in there because you want to show the committee exactly what you accomplished within those roles and then finally the last um, tip that I want to give here is the length of your CV doesn't matter that much as you can tell my cv was five pages and the reason why i put um that much pages was because i wanted just to tell a committee here's everything that i have done in the last 10 years in relation to this phd program and my accomplishments i didn't want them to um you know assume a lot of things about my my experiences so i just put everything that i that i had accomplished and so i would suggest that you don't think too much about your page count, but make sure that everything that you do put on this CV or resume fits your program and fits your, the story you're trying to tell. And so I suggest that you write everything out and um, submit all your accomplishments, all your experiences, because it can be an asset for your overall application. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and gained some new tips for your CV for your PhD programs. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like, subscribe and share. Um, I appreciate the support and I will see you in the next video.